Today we do celebrate another anniversary. I don't know how many we'll celebrate before the Lord comes, but I pray that we will be here and be faithful when He does come. I'm thankful for the members of this church, those of you that have chosen to put your membership here and to serve the Lord through this church. Uh, we're so thankful for you, as Brother Matt mentioned. We have some that go all the way back to that very first Sunday on August 5th, 1973. Brother Pinkstaff was the missionary. And he left records, uh, attendance records. And he, he said there was 12 present in Sunday school on that first Sunday, but he didn't say how many was present for preaching. But among those 12, the Howards, Carl and Deanna, Baby Robert, we're part of that, Bill, Linda Newman, and uh, we are just thrilled that these folks are still with us, and many more have been added down through the ages. But God's been good to this church. God has blessed this church in so many ways. Our text today, we're going to take a break from Colossians. We're going to go into Ephesians to, this morning in chapter 3. I chose this text because of the special day we have today as we celebrate our anniversary of this church and uh, let's take in verse 20 verses 20 and 21 in Ephesians chapter 3 it says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that he worked in us unto him our Lord God, unto him be glory in the church. By Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. I want to think about this today. Unto him be glory in the church. That's what it's all about. It, it explains why we're here today. We're here to give honor to and glory to our Lord. Amen. This building was built and dedicated to that purpose. That we might assemble together here and bring honor and glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Psalmist said in Psalm 29 2, Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I pray we'll do that today. That we'll give unto him the glory that's due unto him. And he deserves our worship. Amen. He deserves our praise. And I hope you're here for that. That you came today to lift up and glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's think about that today. First, consider the place where we assemble. We have come together today, we've assembled here, and first of all, a New Testament church is made up of a membership of redeemed people. That's what we are. We have been redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ. We think about the church as a place where believers assemble, and basically, the church only exists when we do assemble together. See, the word church comes from the Greek word ekklesia, or you might say ecclesia. And that word simply means a called out assembly of people. Jesus took that word and used it to describe his church. A church, a New Testament church, is a called out assembly of scripturally baptized believers who have covenanted together to carry out the Great Commission of Christ. That's what Florence Street Baptist Church is. A lot of people in the world today, they think of a church as a place where religious people are trying to work their way to heaven. That's not the case, is it? Now, I think the members of a church ought to be good moral people who are serving the Lord. But many fail to realize that the reason we can live a good moral life it's because of Jesus Christ. He lives in us and he empowers us 
to live that life. Church members are sinners. All of you should have said amen there. Church members are sinners, but sinners saved by grace. Saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. John Newton, he's well known for amazing grace, but he wrote other songs. He wrote a song entitled, He Died for Me. The first stanza was a testimony of his own life. It reads, In evil long I took delight, unawed by shame or fear, till a new object struck my sight, and stopped my wild career. And he goes on to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, who came into his life and transformed him from a rebellious sinner to a gospel preacher. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ can do. Is that true of us today? Has the Lord Jesus Christ redeemed you and made you and Made you a fit citizen for the kingdom of heaven. John Newton never ceased to marvel at the grace of God. He never ceased to marvel at the mercy and love of God. A vow wicked man. And God still loved him. And saved him and transformed him by his grace. I read that on his, over his mantle in his home, John Newton had an inscription of Deuteronomy 15, 15. And it says, But thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. He wanted to be reminded of that every day. And he would see that inscription, Remember what you once were, remember what you are now. And why? You have been redeemed and transformed. Folks, may we never forget that. Amen. Never forget where you came from and what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. Anything and everything God has done is because of his love and grace and mercy. Not because we deserve it. Amen. We don't. Amen. Praise God for his love and mercy. Then secondly, the church also has a ministry, a ministry of reaching people. That is why we're here, to, to reach others with the word of God, with the gospel. The psalmist said in Psalm 107, verse 2, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Did you say so? Do you let people know that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. There ought not be any question about that. In the way that we live and how we conduct ourselves, we are to share with others what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us in our life and what he can do for them if they would let him. We have a great mission. And our mission is to tell others the story of, of Jesus Christ. My Wednesday night class, we're, we're back in the book of Acts, talking about those early churches and uh, what God did through them, how they spread the gospel throughout the world. And folks, that's still our purpose today. It was more than a program with them. It was a priority. Folks, it was more than a supplemental part. It was a fundamental reason for their existence. That should be true of us today. We're here to train you how to effectively share your faith with others. Now, if we're not doing that, we're failing. We're here to train you, to teach you how to be effective in sharing the gospel with others. That's a priority in this church. We need to equip this membership. We need to give you the tools that you need and provide you with opportunities to share your faith with others. Folks, telling others about Jesus, that's to be our great passion. Our passion, our mission. 
You ever heard of David Brainerd? He was a great missionary back in the old days to, to the American Indians when the colonists were first coming to America. He went to the American Indians with the gospel. And he once wrote in his journal these words. He said, I care not where I go or how I live or what I endure so that I may save souls. When I sleep, I dream of them. When I awake, they are first in my thoughts. That's passion. Kind of reminds you of the Apostle Paul, doesn't it? David Brainerd, I believe, was only like 30 years old when he died. But in his young life, he won many to the Lord and made a great difference in this country. Hey, do you recognize the great mission we have in this life? To reach out to the lost with the greatest story ever told. Every member here has been called to do that. I wonder, how many of you were saved as a result of the ministry of Florence Street Baptist Church? Did you just raise your hand by testimony? I was saved through the ministry of this church. I see several hands going up. Praise God. We have seen many down through the years walk these aisles and accept Jesus Christ as Savior, Amen. baptized, and become members of this church. Second thing I want you to think about, not only the place where we assemble, but let's think about the person whom we adore. Why we come together. It is to worship, it is to praise and glorify and exalt our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Think about why we are devoted to him. Our text says, unto him be glory. Unto him, unto the Lord God be glory. Peter wrote in 1 Peter 2, 7, Unto you therefore which believe, he's precious. Is that true? Is he precious to you? Our Savior? Why is he so precious? Why is he so dear to us? Folks, we adore Jesus Christ for who he is. You say, who is he? Let me share something I came across that I think really manifests this idea. It says, he's the master of the mighty, the captain of the conquerors, the head of all heroes, the overseer of all overcomers, the prince of princes, the lord of lords, the king of kings. What kind of king? Well, he's the national king of Israel, the moral king of righteousness, the eternal king of the ages, the universal king of heaven, the celestial king of glory. He is enduringly strong, eternally steadfast, imperially powerful, impartially merciful. He supplies mercy for the struggling, sustains the tempted and tried, sympathizes with the wounded and brokenhearted, strengthens the weak and weary, guards and guides the wanderer. He forgives the sinner. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He regards the aged. He went on to say he's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway to holiness. He's the gateway to glory. Amen. His promise is sure. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love is unchanging. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. We're going to talk about that tonight, aren't we? Come back. Matt's going to talk about the, our Savior's all sufficient. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. He is indiscernible, he is incomprehensible, he is irresistible, and he is invincible. Amen. Hey, the Pharisees could not stand him, but they could not stop him. Satan tried to tempt him, but could not trip him. Pilate placed him on trial, but found no fault in him. The Romans could crucify him, but they could not take his life. He rose again. Folks, death could not handle him. 
The grave could not hold him. That's who we're here to worship. And he deserves our worship. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the God of the future. He's the God of the past. He is Savior. He is Lord. He is our Almighty One. Amen. Amen. Oh, he's the lover of my soul. And he's the love of my life. How about you? That's why we're here. We have come to worship and adore the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we're devoted to him. Think about what he's done for us. The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. We've all sinned against God. And sin has separated us from God. The Bible says that we were dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, you're in Ephesians. Look over to Ephesians chapter 2. Beginning with verse 1. Ephesians 2, 1. And he's talking to the members there of the Ephesian church and writing this. And he says to them, And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, and thank God for those buts in the Bible. They, what we read so far is kind of d despairing. Is But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. For by grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. You know where it says, made us to sit together in heavenly places? You say, well, preacher, we're not in the heavenly places. Now, some of us think it's heavenly to be here. But this little taste of heaven right here. I'm going to tell you what I think that means. Folks, if you've been saved and born again, in the eyes of God, you're already in heaven. You're already seated in the heavenlies. Nothing can change that. We are in Christ. Where is he? He's in heaven. We're there in him. And as sure as he's there, we are going to join him one day. That's what Christ has done for us. He saved us. He forgave us. He washed us. He lifted us. He transformed us. He gave us eternal life. And he's the only one that could. Folks, there's not many ways to heaven. There's only one door, and it's Mark Jesus. He's the only way. He wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. He put a new song in my heart. He made me a child of God. He has sealed me with the Holy Spirit till the day of redemption. Man, we got plenty of reason to praise God. Amen. He made heaven my destination. He satisfied the deepest longings of my heart. He gave me joy unspeakable and full of glory. He gave me a peace that passes all understanding. Amen? Somebody wrote this. It says, there have been names that I love to hear, but never has there been a name so dear to this heart of mine as the name divine, the precious name of Jesus. Amen. There's no name in earth or heaven above that we should give such honor and such love. As the blessed name, let us all acclaim the wondrous name of Jesus. Someday I shall see him face to face to thank him and praise him for his wonderful grace which he gave to me when he made me free. Bless the blessed name of Jesus. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And he's just the same as his lovely name. And that's the reason 
Why, I love him so. Yes, Jesus, folks, is the sweetest name I know. Amen. Amen. Then finally, I want you to think about the praise which we ascribe to that blessed name. Unto him be glory in the church. Unto him be glory. Folks, the Bible says man, man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him. Christ is to be glorified in the church and by the church. Reminds us of our chief purpose and our commanded practice. Two thoughts here in closing. I want you to think about the subject of our gathering. The subject of our gathering together here today. Folks, we've assembled here not to showcase human talent or human abilities. It's not about personalities. We have no room here for big egos and self-promotion. The church is not about me, and it's not about you. It's about him. That's what it's about. It's all about him. It's not about denominations. It's not about associations or affiliations. It's not about politics. This is not the place for parading political candidates or promoting political agendas. Our symbol is not the donkey or the elephant cross the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord Jesus is to be the center of attention he's to be the focus of our worship remember the certain Greeks came to Philip and they said sir we would see Jesus we want to see Jesus you know that there's people come to visit here and in their heart they're coming and say they're saying we would see Jesus can you show us Jesus? Can you tell us about Jesus? And they should never leave here disappointed. We should show them the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the subject of every song. He's the theme of every sermon. He's the reason for every service. He's the power behind every prayer. He's the source of every gift. Amen. Amen. He's the subject of our gathering. And secondly, he's the object of our gratitude. We come to give praise, honor, and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ because he alone deserves it. That's our one occupation, to come together and lift up and glorify that precious name. I watched the Republican and Democrat conventions recently. I watched how they really glorified their candidates. You see that? They really exalt and glorify their candidates. As I watched it, I thought, you know what? Why can't a church assembly get that excited about our candidate? I'm not trusting in Hillary or Trump. Folks, I'll tell you who can make America great again and who can make this world great again, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And he's coming again, and we need to let this world know that when he comes and establishes his kingdom, then things are going to get worked out. Yes. Don't we have that kind of zeal for the Lord? I want to do something different. We're going to put some scriptures on the screen. I want you to recite with me these scriptures from the Psalms. First Psalm 113, verses 1 through 3. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to let this half of the building recite that with me. You wait, because i got another one I want you to recite with me on the second one. Then you put up Psalm 113, verses 1 through 3. I know everybody's got it memorized, but... There might be one or two here that I thought this was a good idea. <laughs> there we go. Psalm 113. This this hat. Recite that with me. Praise ye the Lord. 
Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same is the Lord's name to be praised. Amen. Amen. All right, how about this side? I want you to recite with me Psalm 96, verses 7 through 9. Now I want you to say it with some passion. Are you ready? Ready? Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Hey, is that fun? Let's do one more all together. Psalm 100 and verse 4. Are you ready? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. We're having church now, aren't we? Man. Folks, we have so many reasons to worship Praise and glorify our Lord. Unto him be glory in Florence Street Baptist Church for as long as we're here. Oh, may that never change. Can you join with me in praising him today? Let me share something. I've shared this before. It's been a long time ago. But thinking about the devotion we should have for Christ, I read a story about a chieftain who lived in the southern boundaries of Persia during the, during the reign of King Cyrus. He'd make raids on the border cities of Cyrus' empire, caused a great deal of trouble. His name was Cagular. For the longest, they could not catch him. Finally, they did capture him and his family. His wife and two small children, they were all brought before Cyrus to be sentenced. Cyrus saw this young family. He was greatly impressed. Cagular was probably the most handsome man he'd ever seen, and his wife the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen. And the two children were just gorgeous. And he looked at this family, and his heart went out to them. The thought of just killing this, this beautiful family was difficult for him. So he did this. He asked Cagular, if I were to spare your life, what would you do? Cagular said, if you were to spare my life, I would be your servant. And I would live the rest of my life for you. King Cyrus said, if I were to spare the life of your children, what would you do? Cagular said, sire, I would go back and gather my men together. We would put your banner over our camp. We would fight your battles from now on. Cyrus said, if I were to spare your wife, what would you do? With tears streaming down his face, Cagular said, Sire, I would immediately die for you at your command. You would spare my life. That deeply moved Cyrus. So he pardoned them and sent them back home. On the way home, Cagular said to his wife, Did you notice the beautiful marble floors in that palace? She said, No, I didn't notice. He said, What about the beautiful tapestries, the, the beautiful colors? The, did you notice that? She said, No, I didn't notice. What about that golden throne the king sat on? Surely you noticed that. She said, No, I didn't notice. He said, woman, what did you see? She said, I only had eyes for the man who said he would die for me. That's Jesus. He did die for you. And he deserves your utmost devotion and your love. When we get to heaven, oh, we'll see the streets of gold and the gates of pearl. We'll see all the beautiful things of heaven. But I think our eyes are just going to be fastened on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we will see him. 
and remember what he's done for us. Do you love him for that?